Hi, my name is Michelle Bachman. I wanted to have just a moment with you to talk to you about the United States of America, why we are so blessed as a nation, and what our legacy is dependent upon. It's dependent upon prayer. And the reason why I'm talking about the future is because we have such a glorious and magnificent past. America has been singularly blessed among nations of the earth, I believe, for one reason. And it's because we have been blessed by the hand of God. And why is that? It's because the founders of this nation recognized that the strength of our nation wasn't dependent upon themselves. It wasn't dependent upon their education. It wasn't dependent upon their status. It wasn't dependent upon their wealth. It was dependent upon the blessing and the uplifting of the magnificent hand of an almighty and sovereign God. You see, the founders of this nation were raised to believe that the God of the Bible was the same yesterday, today, and forever. And that the promises of God that were given to the children of Israel in the Old Testament were also promises that we ourselves could appropriate to ourselves as a nation if we humbled ourselves if we bowed our hearts and our heads before a holy God, then God would hear from heaven. And if we confessed our sins before God, he would hear that confession, forgive this land, and he would build it up. And we have over 225 years of watching the blessing of God on this land. And it's because of the founders and of what the founders understood. You see, this nation was built by a people who recognized that it wouldn't be their own strength that built up and lifted up this nation. They literally saw before them, as they cried out to a holy God, Him beneficially answering their prayers. They knew it wasn't in themselves enough to be able to bring about this nation. They knew that it had to be dependent upon Him. And even in the handwriting of our own very first president of the United States, our first commander in chief, and the first general of the Revolutionary Army, George Washington, that he wrote not once, not twice, but over and over and over again, that it was by providence and the hand of providence that literally miracles were wrought. There's no reason in the world that a ragtag army of underfed uh, soldiers, men who didn't even have shoes oftentimes, they didn't have the financial means most of the time to be able to win any of the battles between the United States and Great Britain. You see, we were fighting the most powerful military force on the earth. There was no reason why we would have won that contest. But the reason we know now today is because we had a band of people who believed in the awesome hand of a mighty God who would deliver us into a point of time where we would come to freedom. And you see, there's a scripture in the New Testament that says this. It says that now the Lord is that spirit. And where the spirit of the Lord is, is liberty. And that's one thing that our founders cherished that understanding in their being that we would, could be a, a land based upon liberty if we recognized who would be the sovereign that would deliver us in that way. We went without oftentimes, and the, the wonderful thing that we know about the early education and heritage of this nation is that it was a founded upon an understanding of the Holy Scriptures. So many of the founders spent their time memorizing scripture, understanding scripture, listening to sermons. Election sermons were preached uh, throughout the United States colonies where preachers would speak to the people about who they needed to elect and why they needed to elect who they did. And our founders looked, if you look of all of the documents that our founders constructed when they put together the Declaration of Independence and the Constitution of the United States, the number one document that was consulted was the Holy Bible because they understood that wisdom and understanding would come out of the scriptures. They understood that a, a, a past great leader, King Solomon, the wisest man in all of the world, look to the scriptures and to the holy God of all mankind for understanding. And when, when Solomon prayed, 
His prayer from the Lord wasn't for riches. It wasn't for long life. His prayer was that he would be given godly wisdom and godly understanding to lead a nation. So too our founders did likewise. They looked to the prayer of Solomon for godly wisdom and godly understanding. You see, when a nation establishes its precepts and its standards upon the standards of the Bible, you see a civilization rise. And this is now the fruit of what generations before have given to us. And that's why we need to understand we have lived off the wealth of greatness, the greatness of the founders who understood where all truth begins. Truth is what this nation was built upon, the truth of the Bible. And that's why going forward, if we are to be blessed, we need to recognize what has worked in the past, which is recognizing the sovereign hand of a holy God and the precepts and the truths of his word. That is what we need to establish today. We can't just live off the past. We have to continue to renew those timeless truths for the next generation. We also need to be those shoulders for the next generation, for our children. For everyone who's watching this right now, I can say with certainty that there is nothing more important to those of you who are listening to this message now than knowing that the next generation of Americans, our children, our grandchildren, future generations, the generations on into the future that we can't even imagine, that legacy, if you will, will only be blessed if they understand and perceive what the generations before understood and saw into the future. You see, they literally spoke into existence this nation based upon faith, the literal faith of our fathers that was built upon timeless truth. We too now have been given that baton our ancestors handed that baton on to us, and it's up to us today to be faithful to that truth and then hand that legacy on into the future. So through prayer, through understanding, through education, we need to make sure, and through our lives, we need to make sure that we continue to publish and republish the great truths that the founders understood and gave to us. No other generation has been able to see what we've seen. We are the greatest military powerhouse the world has ever known. We're the greatest economic powerhouse the world has ever known. And just like Abraham Lincoln said, do we think that we are the ones who secured this for ourselves? How foolish, how arrogant we would be. It isn't that we gave the blessing. It's what God wrote through Moses in Deuteronomy. We choose life or we choose death. We choose it by whether or not we choose to live and walk out the precepts that have been set out, the precepts for life, the precepts for blessing, or do we choose cursing and do we choose death? As a nation, we choose life. And that's what we who, who are believers, I'm a believer in Jesus Christ, those of us who believe in the eternal truths of a holy God, we can choose life for ourselves, but corporately we can choose life and blessing for our nation. That's what I'm saying that we must do corporately as a believing body. Choose life, choose the future for our legacy, which is the next generation. That's what we need to stand for. Our forebears did that for us, and it's up to us now to do that for our greatest joy, which is our children and our grandchildren. God bless you. God bless the United States of America.